All right, everybody, welcome to a new episode of TLC Talk on the Sarah Fraser Show. Every single Wednesday, we recap the biggest, most talked about gossip from your favorite TLC shows, including Sister Wives, 90 Day Fiance, and you know, 90 Day Fiance has 18 different franchises. The Other Way, Happily Ever After, Do Be in the Ass, whatever it is. Uh, so today, we have a huge alleged, another big scandal. In the world of the 90 Day Fiance franchise with Mary and Brendan, if you don't recall Mary and Brendan, you are seeing them probably all over your 90 Day feed and social media feed because it is alleged now that they may be faking that Mary has colon cancer in the Philippines where they got married a year ago. Are you following along still? Um, How did this all come about? Now, for the past two days, I have been reading about Mary and Brandon from season five of Happily Ever After, doing a deep dive into what could possibly be going on here, because it seems to be a theme Karini and Paul um, before that, of course, um, it, you know, we, we've had various like fake death things. Uh, same with Paul. Paul had said he was he or Karini put out something that Paul was um, dead in Brazil and R.I.P. What a great father! Only to find out apparently he was quote unquote lost in the jungle. Josh Cedar. Josh Cedar put out a whole thing for like several days that he was dead, and then come to find out he was alive and well. I mean, it's very something is in the water of what is happening. In the 90-day sphere. Okay. And fans are very upset that this story has grown so large that People.com is picking it up. Why are people upset about that? Because People has historically been quite a legitimate source for gossip and news. Like, it's really... Do I dare say it's going downhill? No, I I don't think it's going downhill. I think they had an integrity that you wouldn't see with some of the other... um, blogs out there and news outlets RIP to the Inquirer the National Inquirer which I used to love oh my god I mean all through high school I would pick that up I would read about Batgirl and I will say this there was a streak before I mean I think I I believe they took down Jeff Bezos and that was it once you go after the richest man in like all the land uh, he basically buried them and destroyed them but minus that for years the National Enquirer got legitimate stories They broke Patrick Swayze back in the day having cancer. I mean, they were the real deal, okay? John Edwards, remember the politician John Edwards who was having this affair while his wife was dying of cancer uh, with Rael Hunter and they had a love child? I mean, they were the first to publish that photo of the love child, whether you agree with it or not. So fans are not happy that this story has been brought to people's attention. Brandon and Mary remain under scrutiny today after announcing this week that she had colon cancer and issuing a plea to raise funds to, quote, save her life. Now, they wed last year as they posted on their Instagram. They had a fundraising page that was created for Mary's colon cancer. Now, here's the problem, number one. The very first image, and I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, but the very first image they used on that GoFundMe was the same picture of Mary having her C-section with her baby. And, you know, that was a difficult pregnancy. And they have done a GoFundMe before, okay? So they used the same picture of her in a hospital bed. And a lot of people are like, wait a minute, says This already seems scammy because why aren't you doing like a current diagnosis, you know? So that was sort of red flag number one. Then Brandon went on his social media to essentially say, well, hold on. Mary hasn't exactly been with, been diagnosed yet. Uh, The first post that they put up was, I'm humbly asking for your financial help for Mary's surgery to remove her colon cancer. We need help, not judgments. Any amount to Mary will save her life. Okay. Um, She says, Mary says that prior to the halting of this campaign, Mary admitted to being, quote, scared of the surgery after having her C-section to have her daughter midnight. And she's now afraid of doctors. She and Brandon have said this on their social media. She's afraid to go to doctors. She's very scared. Her C-section was rough. Um, And Mary also said she doesn't have financial support to fund the procedure as she's the only one working in the family. Please don't judge me, she wrote. Now, here's the problem. 
a lot of people are saying, girl, in the Philippines, it's socialized medicine. This this is covered. Okay, this is covered. This surgery is covered. And the way they phrased it is like, help us pay for her surgery. Now, okay, in anybody that knows the socialized medicine country, many of you listening to this know it far better than I do. I don't know. That, that to me, just because it's socialized medicine, I mean, surgery is still tough. She's the breadwinner. They probably need additional money. I don't know. In socialized countries, can you pay to be prioritized? I guess not. That's capitalism, right? <laughs> is that like defeat the purpose? Um, so at first, people were rallying behind them. Inspir- they were posting inspirational song lyrics. People were saying, keep going. Everybody was very, very uh, supportive. But a post later uh, essentially said that Mary has not actually been diagnosed with colon cancer, that she kind of self-diagnosed herself by going on to TikTok and has a lot of the same symptoms. And Brandon ended up posting on his social media like, well, we're pretty sure. Mary and Brandon on their mutual Facebook uh, board or page, right? Just to be clear, exclamation point, exclamation point. This is like just a day or two ago. We don't know if Mary have colon cancer yet. Yes, she posted on her IG that she have colon cancer because she watched TikTok videos of what is the symptoms of colon cancer and she have all of it. And on February 16th, we went to the center and have her checkup and the nurse said maybe she got UTI or appendicitis and a possible colon cancer. That's why Mary is very scared. So the nurse gives us referral to admit Mary at the city hospital and we went there next day. We went to the ER. We talked to the doctor. The doctor said that Mary needs laboratory first, so we did that. We go to laboratory, have her pee and poop in a cup and have her blood test, and we wait for the result. After an hour, the result is there, and the doctor said that Mary have blood infection. Mary needs whole abdominal ultrasound and an x-ray, and we did that. Then we got the results. The result is in our hand right now, and we need to go back to the hospital tomorrow to give it to the OPD to analyze the result of her ultrasound and x-ray. And the doctor said we need to wait for the result, and we will send us to another doctor, the gastrointestinologist, for referral to do the colonoscopy. We are still dot, dot, dot. Mary's still in pain. Please stop spreading fake news. All right. So this looks like to me, are they intentionally scamming? Uh, I I think it's too early to say that, right? Seems like, I I will say this, I understand the criticism they're getting. You popped a go, you know, GoFundMe or GoGetFunding.com like instantly. And it sounds like, to be fair, you don't really know the results. Now, they corrected it awfully quickly, okay? Why, you know, I I mean, so was it a mistake? Did, Did Mary or Brandon just set up the GoFundMe? They want the cash ASAP? I don't know. But people still on his social media want to give them money and support them. What the hell does it matter if it's a GoFundMe or a Venmo? Now, GoFundMe has, I know it matters because GoFundMe has very strict rules. They do not want to be considered a scamming department. Even even if you're like raising money for an event, they want it very well spelled out. I've done events on there and then I've had them flagged because, you know, they don't want certain promises at certain price points. They really want to make sure whatever you say is the truth and you are delivering on that. So I get it. But, oh my Lord, the, this couple has set the internet ablaze, sweeties, a blaze of if they are lying or not lying. And Brandon even went so far as to tell fans, we are not lying and may God take care of your ass if you're questioning us. Woo! That escalated. Brandon, Brandon. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of things here. Can I ask a few questions, folks? I mean... You're coming at us left, right, and center. Anyway, so we'll see how that unfolds. But certainly, I hope to God it's not a scam because it does seem like we have been scammed now every few months. And I feel like I'm forgetting a TLC alleged scam recently. I feel as though these these TLC stars are scamming us a little bit every couple of months. I don't know. But that one's a good one. That one is a good one to figure out. If you if you know concrete proof, which it doesn't seem like anyone does, I just gave you the whole summary and the back and forth. And honest to God, people are more fired up about the people.com carrying the story than they are like whether she really has colon cancer. I mean, it sounds like some serious things are happening. 
She also went on to give details Brandon did about how she pooped black poops like back when in her 20s and then it was fine. And she, or she had blood, I'm sorry, blood and black stools and then it kind of was like fine. They've gone into a lot of detail here. They've gone into a lot of detail. I, I give people the benefit of the doubt. I hope to God they're not scamming. You know, it sounds like they're waiting on the results and it, and we're all praying for her. Hopefully it's, she's completely fine. So there you're up to speed. Um, I want to thank Seed Scout. The, the SeedScout.com is the website you need to go to. Uh, male infertility is on the rise. Many of us will be faced with using a sperm donor, whether we're a same-sex couple, whether, oh, my single ladies, oh, my single ladies. If you are single and you want that baby on your own, do it. I love being a mom. You know, I'm working on number two. And, um, and of course, heterosexual couples. More people than ever are facing fertility issues. You need to get with a sperm donor bank that you can trust. And let me tell you, the IVF sperm world can be a shady one, not with the Seed Scout. Danielle Winston has personally been on this podcast, and I've spoken to her many times before I wanted to work with her because I wanted to guarantee that you are in the best hands. What makes Seed Scout unique? The Seed Scout unique limits their donors so they can't uh, sell their sperm on a secondary market, meaning the Seed Scout. You're paying more, but you know exactly who you are getting in the donor and you know and are guaranteed that they are not, their sperm is not being second and third hand sold to other countries or other people. The Seed Scout does all the screening with you. If you have any questions, they're a small business, you can contact them directly and you can actually get to know your sperm donor. Why is that important? They're finding out whether your sperm donor, an egg donor, your children often want to know the genetics. They want to know the specifics of who their DNA person was. Not that that's their father by any means, but their DNA carrier. And the Seed Scout really works with you to make sure you have the comfortable level that you want with your sperm donor. You know them, you know where they're coming from, you know so much more about them so you can make a really informed choice. I love the Seed Scout. You get $100 off by telling them that you heard about them from the Sarah Fraser Show. They do free consultations. You have nothing to lose. Pass this on to your favorite same-sex couple, maybe you are one yourselves, or someone you know that is looking to have a child on their own or struggling with male fertility. The Seed Scout. Two big things going on in the sister world world. McKelty and Tony, of course, the daughter, one of Christine and Cody's daughters, McKelty, has like a fire Patreon. Okay, this chick can retire off that Patreon. It's so hot. It's so on and popping with Tony. Collectively, they lost like 100 pounds she, over that. She's lost 110 on her own. But they've been making some waves in the past couple of weeks on their Patreons and their live streams. Because people have asked them if, in fact, Robin and Cody hired a PR team and how is it going? Because it seems as though Cody and Robin, short of when Cody does cameos, which are quite expensive, by the way. cameo Cody wants like over $100 for his cameo shout out. Are we paying that, y'all? Fam, are we willing to lay down $100 plus for the Codemeister? It's a lot. It's a lot. I think Tammy was 60. That was high enough. I had the Tammy Slayton. So they were asked what's going on with the PR company because Cody and Robin seem awfully quiet. And if you are working with someone in PR, wouldn't they be getting them out there, right? Like a great place to start would be stopping by the Sarah Fraser Show podcast. Just saying, all right, that would be a good place to start. I help people here. I don't, I don't, I, I rarely dislike anyone on this show. Come and tell your story openly. I always give people a shot. But Tony McKelty said that one, they doubt that, that there is really a PR person. And two, they think that Cody and Robin cannot be helped. Now, they, did they say that bluntly? No. But Tony basically said that Cody and Robin, it is very hard for them to take advice. And it's very hard for them to, I guess, implement or not say how they feel. Essentially, Tony's saying, look, Cody speaks out of pocket, and that's Cody. I kind of like that about him because I think I think you get a lot of info. Um, but they also seem to say that Robin was the same way, and they would not really confirm or deny if there was a PR person, but they certainly made it sound like that PR person is pr- it's probably not – going particularly well so there was also a rumor out there and I I believe that they were responding to some of this that the PR company that they had hired had quit again they didn't confirm or deny that but essentially a lot of people are saying that 
Tony is confirming that Robin and Cody just are not going to take any PR person's advice. All right. Um, so the other sister wives tea that's going on is a lot of people believe that Christine Woolley and David Woolley's Moab, Utah Airbnb that you can rent is not going so well. Last week on the show, I talked all about it, gave you the description, the review, had some comments about it. And the thing I didn't like is you have had to have had the three bookings on Airbnb before you can book with them. I have to imagine this is pretty standard. I think people can set this. I'm familiar with my brother's business, Comfy Dome Glamping in Maine, and I don't think he has any requirements. You know, you can come. He does this awesome breakfast. You can sleep under the stars. Now, maybe Christine wants to weed out the people that are serious or not serious. But then a few days later... She posted, hey, loves, don't wait. The next three people to book my Airbnb get 20% off their entire stay. Follow the link in my bio or go to the website, airbnb.com slash H slash Christine Brown Woolly Retreat.com. So people are going, well, you shot your shot. You, you overshot your shot. Uh, no one's booking it. And um, now you're offering a discount. So <laughs> I don't know. It's, I don't think Christine's panicked. I don't think I wouldn't yet but I always wonder if those things really help you know does it help I, I guess it helps Mary because I've, I'm going I, I'm going to go stay at Mary Brown's B&B and I look and I mean the only times that are available are weekends but I think that's by design they just want you on the weekend I don't know maybe a lot of people don't come to your destination spot I would think it would certainly help um, the other thing that was announced last week is um, 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After. The new cast has been announced. Are you excited? A lot of people with very, very mixed feelings. And most of that centers around Liz and Ed for season eight, okay? Because Liz and Ed, Big Ed, are back. And we know that they are, in fact, broken up. This is a little surprising to me, and I do want Liz to come back on or Ed because I feel as though something has happened here. Uh, I'm, I'm shocked, and what I mean by that is like Liz is so out there with her new man. Is Liz done with the 90 Day Fiance franchise? Are they done with her? Because Liz is out there, honey, out and about with this new guy, and I have confirmation she is dating. I have absolute confirmation from sources that she is dating somebody new down in San Diego. So it's a little anticlimactic. And I have to admit, I'm I'm sort of like, well, I'm not, I don't want to follow their stuff because I know how it's ending. But the happily ever after couples, now Kobe and Emily, I love Kobe and Emily. You know them from season nine of 90 Day Fiance. Alexi and Lauren, love. They've been on this show. They're terrific. Muhammad and Nicole. 90 Day Fiance the other way. Uh, or sorry, isn't it Mahmoud? And um, I, yeah, wait, is it Muhammad or Mahmoud? Okay, anyway, we'll find out. You guys know. I'm terrible with names. I apologize. Thais and Patrick. Now I got their names correct. And I like them too. I remember Patrick's brother, John, that's on Single Life. Epic. We're going to be getting more John. They love that th that that threesome. And since then, Thais and Patrick have had a baby. She's like such a doll. Oh, here's another one that fans are not so thrilled about. Actually, the last three. Jasmine and Gino returned to Happily Ever After. And I'm going to get into that because we saw people.com, again, picked up and they posted Jasmine and Gino, their wedding photos. They are married. And I'm going to tell you about their marriage that happened June of 2023. So they're another couple, you know, I, I want to have them on the podcast because I really, I, there's so many questions I want to ask them, but I have to say, I've never been so annoyed. I'm actually not annoyed with Ed and Liz. Like I enjoy them so much and I probably will feel the same way when I meet Jasmine and Gino, but they drive me bonkers. And then Michael and Angela are back from last resort. Now look, we all know Michael and Angela, huge fan favorites. Um, everybody loves them. They're back, baby. So we're going to be getting more of them for better or worse. Most people's um, things with Angela is just that the way Angela treats Michael, they would never allow a man to act and behave the way that Angela does. 
with good old Michael. So are you excited about 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After Season 8? Are we watching, folks? Add it to the queue. Add it to the queue. About 25 other shows we've got. You got a little bit of time, though, because it premieres Sunday, March 17th at 8 p.m. So we've got a hot second. All right. They keep us They keep us hanging on. Um, and lastly is Jasmine and Gino. So Jasmine and Gino, obviously 90 Day Fiance, loves them. TLC loves them. This is their third show. Now they're going on to Happily Ever After. And... Their marriage photos surfaced. Now, I know what you're getting to. If you're listening to this at home, you're yelling into the um, speaker and you're saying, Sarah, they've broken up. They've broken up. Why why aren't you getting to that? Let me get to this because I have a theory about these two. And I think I'm going to be right. So their wedding photos emerged this week. Gorgeous. If you haven't seen them, they're on my TikTok at the Sarah Fraser show. Here they are too. I'm holding them up if you want to see them because you know I'm, all my videos are on YouTube now, too. Stunning. They got married in Dexter, Michigan, with just 12 guests in June of 2023. If you're thinking, wow, what about Jasmine's kids? Were they there? Her family? Everybody live streamed in. It was mostly just Gino's family. She, gorgeous as a bride. Like, I mean, unbelievable. Look at this. She's so, st- I mean, she's stunning. And the, and the, Plastic surgery, you know, I've gone back and forth. I'm all, I mean, it just seems like a lot, but she looked, I mean, she's a stunning bride. Photographs well. People are like, for God's sakes, Gino, take the hat off. He wore the hat the entire time, almost the entire time. Although people are saying the most exciting thing of 90 Day Fiance season 10 is seeing Gino take his hat off. He did take a wedding photo without his hat on. Epic, epic. Dozens of comments on my TikTok, enough with the hat. And then it gets to Sarah. I heard she left him. They split. So why are people saying this? Well, people are saying this because she most recently, for Valentine's Day, did a live TikTok. And she said, I have no Valentine. I've gotten no gifts. But you guys are my Valentines. You're sending me hearts and roses on my TikTok, which, of course, is like little tokens of money. And I love you all, and it's okay, I'm good alone. And she does seem to be posting, I think, pictures that make it look like maybe she's back in Panama. There's also been some discussion about her health and being in Michigan, that the weather is really rough. And obviously we've seen that with season 10, right? Moving there and how cold it is. Um, I just, I, I don't believe them, guys. I'm sorry, I don't. I just don't. People really are convinced she's single, if I've been wrong before, absolutely. But I think Gino and Jasmine are a master at playing this game. And I think unlike where my girl Liz, who I really love, I think Liz is like, fuck it. I've been messing around. I fooled around with Ed like long enough. I'm posting my life and I don't care if the show's 10 years behind. I think Jasmine and Gino, and she loves to be on camera, loves the fame, loves her attention. She's now a Fashion Nova ambassador. She is turning this into a real thing, right? She's like our Natalie Mortsadova, who I love. But Natalie Mortsadova has a plan with this. And I think that Jasmine has a plan with this too. I I actually, part of me just thinks this is staged very, very, very well. I just think that they are still together. The only slight thing that gives me pause is I actually think that she has done so well in her branding and marketing, whether you like her or not. I think she's getting to the point that she's going to make more money than Gino. And I think that's going to be a problem. I do. Because if she doesn't, you know, Gino was the sugar daddy. Gino was the daddy. And I mean, I think Gino does well, but I'm not sure Gino has like deep, deep pockets. And if she's beginning to make 10 grand a month on her own with ambassadorships, plus the TV show, plus cameos, she's doing lingerie. Um, Yeah. We could be looking at an issue here. We could be looking because then it's sort of like, well, I've got him, but could I be getting an even bit better zaddy? I, but the thing that I'm going to go with, if you, if you made me put down a hundred dollar bet right now, I'm going to say they're still together and this is very strategic. And she, the reason too is she posted about them being unhappily ever after. And she's like, are we still together? Dot, 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 wink face, find out. Queen knows how to play the game. 
queen knows how to play the game and I think they are still together but we'll see and I wrote that someone said didn't they split and I said I know well I think I know but I'm not sure I believe the two of them and the person wrote back true you never know with these two and I said yeah people think she's moved to Miami where it's warmer she got a green card and she's like peace could be it could be it could be we'll see um all right Lots to get to um, in the next couple of weeks. Thousand Pound Best Friends, are they coming back? I did get some inside scoop that saw some of the women from Thousand Pound Sisters filming, but I'm trying to get a little bit of confirmation of what is going on with this show. And also, breaking news. Breaking news. From a source that is very, very close to I Love a Mama's Boy, they allege that I Love a Mama's Boy is coming back for a season four. I had heard that show had been canceled along with Darcy and Stacy. I don't think Darcy and Stacy is necessarily coming back in its same form, but I have heard from a source very close to I Love a Mama's Boy that the show is coming back. We are confirmed that it's back. So where is it? been an awfully long time since it's been on I would think we should be getting a huge TLC big announcement we know my 600 pound life is coming back in the next month or so but where are thousand pound best friends where is I love a mama's boy if these shows are so on and popping we'll see all right everybody follow me on TikTok at the Sarah Fraser show bye everybody